was a real estate agent came here before I knew anything about the Hope Farm. He said he had a buyer for this farm next to me, he was a rancher out of Nebraska, would like to have a little more land. I wondered if I'd want to sell, and I said no, I didn't want to sell because this was my dream to stay here. And it wasn't a month's time till I heard that the Hope Farm was coming in. Most of premium standard farms money comes from uh, Morgan Stanley Investment Bank out of New York City. And to me, that's one of the most damnable things of this whole corporate hog experience in North Missouri. This doesn't have anything to do with Missouri agriculture. This has everything to do with capital and control and large amounts of East Coast money that's coming in here and doing their thing. They don't care about Missouri agriculture. They don't care about Missouri's environment. And they sure don't care about Missouri citizens or their small family farmers. If we don't stop these people here now, they're not going to stop anywhere. Corporate agriculture is going to take over this country, and there won't be anyone to stand by a small family farm corral with cattle in the background to talk to you because there won't be any of those people anymore. This is about so much more than just what's going on right here in Lincoln Township. This is about what's going on in America and what kind of people are going to be raising the food supply that we're going to be feeding our country and a growing world with from now on. We've ruined so many farmers that want to stay out here and farm to make factory type jobs out of farming, which isn't right. Okay. There's no money in it. You're just doing it for nothing. There's no future in it. Not now. Used to be you'd have your high and low markets, you know. It would be, you'd get good markets for a while, and then you'd get low markets, but they'd always come back sooner or later. I don't believe they ever will now. Not unless something drastic happens and they phase out these hog factories. I think in time, industry will do to the hog business what they did to the poultry business. I think it'll put the independent man out of business, that you will work for a feed company and you will work for a slaughterhouse and, and that's all you'll be doing. The big operations aren't going to back out and just leave a certain share of it to independent hog producers until they've, even if it means short-term losses, they're going to continue to expand because they have the vision of being able to control the industry and sustain profitability year after year at some point in the future. And they're not going to give that up. We think we're going through that phase uh, in an industry where we've eliminated the barrier to entry and we have new technology uh, so that we're, we're developing over capacity and we're pushing the market uh, to the point that we're going to wash out the wheat. Corn's cheap right now, but when it was higher, you know, that hurt. And I don't have a big setup. All I've got is a few heat lamps in the wintertime when it's cold. That's the most of my other expenses. But you can't make anything when hogs are 33 cents like they were Friday. Producers producing 1,000 hogs or less a year have gone from 32% of the total U.S. industry in 1988 to 5% in 1997. The producers marketing 50,000 hogs or more have gone from 7% in 88 to 37% in 97. It's bad for your competition, or it's bad for the small producer, because it is increasing, it is increasing the competitive environment uh, that he's uh, operating in. The corporation doesn't have any choice. It can only be a corporation. 
it can't care about the neighbors and it can't care about families and it can't care about these other things only to the extent that it promotes the well-being of the corporation so that's that's what you have driving the hog business today is a, a corporate mentality that the only thing it really knows is profit and growth we just appear to have a tremendous amount of money in this country to invest somewhere and you take all the 401k packages that uh, that people have as far as retirement programs are concerned and so forth is, is probably one of the things that's fuel, fueling this unprecedented rise in the stock market uh, along with adding to some the capacity of the hog industry. One of the ways industrialization achieves this efficiency, the economic efficiency, is by reducing labor, reducing management. Because one of the most costly resources that goes into the production of anything are the people. Uh, so industrial model inherently is a model that allows fewer people to produce more. In a way, it de-skills a community. You have, pe you have uh, a community of sustainable family farmers, and they know how to do a lot of things. I mean, they're agronomists. They have to be foresters. They have to be cattlemen. They have to know how to work with computers. They have to know how to weld. They have to have all these skills to be able to to be self-sufficient in their community, and, and uh, all I can really see that is the overriding thing that they bring is dissension. What we're really talking about is concentrating more hog production in one place, which means that you inherently are going to displace independent hog producers in other locations. And not only that, but you're going to displace more independent hog producers elsewhere than you employ in the particular hog operation that you're locating. What we do is, is concentrate the gain in one place and then take credit for that, and then we, we deny or ignore the fact that the pain is spread out elsewhere, and, and we just pass that off. It's like, we're going to bring all these jobs in and, and all these property taxes in, I'm sure they didn't say, you won't believe what this county's going to smell like. I'm sure they never came in there and, and told them that, and they probably never came in and told them that uh, the, um, the waste material is going to invade your drinking water and kill your fish. When you put tens of thousands of hogs at one spot, uh, grow them fast, kill them, and put their manure in uh, just in a holding spot, it causes problems. The two significant real problems are first water quality problems both short-term and long-term. And the second one is the stupefying odor that comes off of these types of facilities. When you bring in the levels of operations we see here, unseen in Missouri ever before, you bring in a whole new environmental equation. We have seen a series of spills, or releases, uh, of hog manure and waste that have reached on far too many occasions, approaching a dozen, the waters of the state of Missouri. There's been fish kills, killing as many as 180,000 fish in one of the um, spills. But also it has, with the high content of uh, nitrogen and other chemicals, it literally sucks the oxygen and life out of some streams. Well, ours will only go up to three parts per million on the ammonia. During the spill, it was running, uh, I mean, all we could tell was it was off scale to us, which any time it's off scale, they tell you to be sure and contact someone, because if it's over three parts per million, you got a serious problem. But during the spill, it was running about 150 parts per million, up to 300. 150 parts per million, it'll kill everything completely dead instantly. I mean, it's a matter of, for the most hardiest species of bug or fish, a matter of minutes, and they're dead. It's truly toxic. What we're looking for are serious problems in the water. You know, they say, well, 